Good evening, church. We are continuing our series on mental health. This one is entitled The Answer to Anxiety, Part 1, because this will be a multi-series study. Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 5. No, starting in verse 6. I'm sorry. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. I'm going to stop there. Father, I come before you with the day of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask that you anoint me to preach. Anoint me to deal with this subject, Father, the way that the way that you want it dealt with. Anoint your people to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The answer to anxiety. Church, Paul gives us the answer. He says, be careful for nothing. That literally translates there. Do not worry about anything. But instead, seek the Lord regarding everything. Seek the Lord regarding literally everything. Do we, are we praying? For whatever is worrying us, myself included. Church, I'm preaching this out of a state right now. I'm having to walk through it. I'm not just preaching this to pre I'm literally walking through this. And there are circumstances that I will not relate, but I am literally walking through this. I'm literally having to trust him with things that 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 have been worrying me. Things that that I've been that I've allowed to be burdened and heavy laden with. And the Bible says here. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your minds and hearts through Jesus Christ. Worry and anxiety don't mix with faith. We all find ourselves at times in a storm. We all find ourselves at times in a storm and, and he's asleep in the boat. And the waves are contrary and we can't see, Lord, we're going to drown. They literally woke him up and said, Lord, carry us down, not that we perish. It is the same way with us. Lord, I'm drowning. I can't see a way out. You're going to have to help me through this. Church, but he is a good, good father. He didn't bring you. Okay, I'm going to give you all another example. Peter was the only one other than Christ to ever walk on water. But when he got his eyes off of Christ and onto the storm, what happened? He began to sink. Christ had to reach down and pick him up. And they walked back to the boat together. 
See, we could get our eyes off of Christ and onto the storm. And when we do, fear and anxiety set in. Lord, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to get to the other side of the, of, the, of the sea when the storm is raging? You're asleep in the stern of the boat, and, and I the boat is taking on water, and Lord, I don't know what to do. When he arises and speaks and speaks to your storm and says, peace be still. But the thing is, are we okay when he doesn't still the storm? When instead he stills us? Now, did you catch what I just said? Sometimes he allows the storm to rage. Instead, he stills us. Instead, he stills our troubled heart. The storm is still raging church, but he can steal your heart in the midst of it to trust him through the storm. Paul tells the church at Philippi to be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make our, re make our request be known unto God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your minds and hearts through Christ. See, at times the storm rages and he gives peace. We want him to speak to our mountain, to our valley, to our sea, and say, peace be still. We want him to, to speak to the mountain be thou removed. There are times when he doesn't move the mountain where he expects us to climb it. He doesn't steal the storm, like I said. Instead, he steals us. I've got you. The storm is raging, yes, but you're in the palm of my hand. Everything around you is falling apart, but you're in the palm of my hand. Everything around you feels like it's falling and feels like it's crumbling. You're in the palm of my hand. I point you back to, to, to Job, church. He lost everything. His kids died lost. Now, now think about what I just said. His kids died lost. His wife told him to curse God and die. He lost his health. He lost his wealth. And he did not understand what was going on, but yet through it all, he would say, though you slay me yet, my Lord, though you slay me yet, will I trust you? Lord, I don't know why you're, why, why everything's gone, pardon the expression, to heck in a handbasket. I don't know why you're allowing lost loved ones to, 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 to continue the way they're continuing. I don't know why you're allowing circumstances that you're allowing, but though you slay me, yet I'll trust you. Through it all, Father, yet I'll trust you. The storm is raging, and he's asleep. Church, let me ask you something. And this is to me too. Could it be him allowing the storm to rage to draw us closer to him?
myself included. Myself first. See, we don't like going through the storm. We don't like the enemy being allowed to to kind of play with us. But ultimately, you go and you read the end of the book of Job. The Bible says that he ended up with more, twice as much as he had before Satan was allowed to tempt and to test. Think it not strange the fiery trials. Think it not strange when when the Lord starts dealing with you and places a burden there. Think it not strange when the Lord starts birthing things in you to be seeking him about in the midst of your storm. Because it's oftentimes in the midst of the storm when we finally start seeking him. We don't seek him when everything when the sea is calm. Everything was fine when the sea was calm. Everything was fine when when everything's smooth. But when adversity hits, how do we deal with it? Paul said, be careful for nothing. That literally translates worry over nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. So you're telling me to go to him with thanksgiving when I'm praying for a lost loved one. So, 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 Pastor JB, you're telling me that to 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 go with him to go to him with thanksgiving when everything around me is falling apart. You're telling me to thank him when my world is crumbling. Yes. Why? Because when we go to him in prayer and we start praising him for what he has done, it strengthens our faith. It strengthens our faith. Lord, you brought me through this, 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 and this. You brought me through the valley, like I preached on Sunday. You brought me through the fire. You brought me through the wilderness. So we can trust you with what we're dealing with now. It's not easy. Church, I look, I, I'm walking through this. On more levels than I can express, I am walking through this. I'm having to learn to trust him more. Even in the midst of the storm. Even in the midst of, of whatever the case. I am being. I have to trust him. Though you slay me yet I'll trust you. Father you're allowing what you're allowing for a reason. I don't understand it. I don't understand how people can ha have to walk through what they're walking through. But I know by your word, because the Bible is clear, everything that happens to a believer ultimately works for our good. It may not seem good right now. It may seem difficult now. 
but somewhere through this, you're going to get the glory. Father, I don't see how, but somewhere in this, you're going to get the glory. You're crushing me right now. You're molding me right now. And it doesn't feel good. And I am trusting you through it because it is those very sovereign hands that are moving and dealing and molding me. It's not comfortable. It's not comfortable when he throws you on the potter's wheel and starts molding. And we oftentimes, we catch ourselves, Lord, just let me up. This is too uncomfortable. Let me up. Not realizing that if we stay on the potter's wheel, he will make something beautiful out of it. I don't, church, I don't care what, what battle you're currently in. Okay, it's immaterial. You're anxious. You're dealing with, with emotions and you're dealing with, with being anxious. Lord, how is this going to all pan out? I am here to tell you by the authority of the written word of our Father. All things. He didn't say some. He said all. Work together for the good of those that trust him and are called according to his purpose. The book of Romans chapter 8. So he may be allowing you to go through the hardest trial you've ever went through. He may be allowing you to, to, to go through like the walls are closing in. And, and you're thinking, Lord, I can't do this no more. This is too hard. Child of God, let me tell you something. Everything that he is allowing you, he is allowing us to go through will eventually turn out for our good. We will look back at this valley. We will look back at this trial. We will look back at whatever it is when it is over, when he has bought us out. Because his word says, like I preached Sunday, he's bringing us through. He's not bringing us to a valley to leave us. He's not bringing us to a place to leave us. He's bringing us through, hopefully, prayerfully, so we have a closer, intimate walk with our Father. The answer to anxiety, church, is a closer walk. The closer you draw to Calvary, the closer you allow him to draw you, the more intimate work he does. It's not easy to walk through and trust him. Lord, I don't see how this is going to work. But you told me to do this I'm having to trust you with it. I don't see how you can save this lost loved one. I don't see how you can restore whatever the case. But you have said, I will restore everything in Joel 2 that the canker worm has eaten. I don't see how you're going to restore it, but I'm standing on your word. My 
church, you can trust him. You think your anxiety is a shock to him? Mm -mm. But it is not his will that we worry over it. It is his desire that we learn how to take everything to him in prayer. Lord, this is bothering me. I need you to give me peace about it. Because notice what the Bible says. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. The peace of God is stronger than whatever you're facing. He died on Calvary to give you peace. He died on Calvary to give you peace. You think it's his will that you're anxious? You think, uh, y'all, look, like I said, I'm dealing with this too. I'm walking through this too. So I know, and we look at this and we're like, Lord, just, just, just deliver us out of it. Just deliver us out of it. Tell the storm to hush. Remove the mountain. Because I'm tired of climbing. Remove and steal the storm because I'm tired of it. And he whispers, no. It's like the thorn in the, in, in, in Paul's thigh, he said, Lord, remove it. It is uncomfortable. Remove it. And what did the Lord tell Paul? No, Paul, I'm not going to remove the thorn, but my grace is sufficient. Church. He will keep your minds and hearts in perfect peace if we will allow him to do it. And I, like I said, I'm walking through this. This is not, this is easier preached than done. It is easier preached than done. Because we want to fix it. It is human nature. Lord, I want to fix this. I don't want to wait on you to fix it. I want to fix it. And what ends up happening is we put our hands to it and we make it worse. We put our hands to it and we make it worse. Instead of laying it at his feet and saying, Father, here you go. I'm tired. Here you go. And the reality of it is, church, he will let you carry it as long as you want to carry it. He will allow you to carry it as long as you want to carry it. But eventually that weight becomes so heavy that we finally say, Lord, I can't do this no more. And prayerfully lay it at his feet. See, he will allow the weight to be added just a little bit. Until we can no longer walk until we can no longer run, until we can no longer walk, and until we're down on our hands and knees and we're literally crawling. But see, we still want to hold on to the weight. 
a weight that we were never meant to carry in the first place. We're meant to take every weight, every burden to him in prayer and lay it at his feet. And know, because he is a good, good father, that he will handle it. Once again, y'all, that's not easy to do. It's not easy to do when you see people that, that, and you think, Lord, what is going on? And you sit there and you let it ravage your brain. Because how did this happen? How did, why did, and I know we're not supposed to ask him why, what is the reason behind what you're allowing to happen? Lord, you took somebody I cared about. Lord, you allowed something to happen that, that, that I don't understand. You allowed a split in the family, you allowed whatever the case. And oftentimes we allow that to draw us back from him. Myself, first, foremost. But what I have came to realize over the last... What, month? He's not afraid of our emotions. Church, he's not. He's the one that created them. And there is such a thing as a righteous anger. I can't explain... I'm going to leave that alone. But there are things he doesn't expect us to carry. He expects us to lay it at his feet. Paul said, be careful for nothing, but by in everything by prayer and supplication. You want to know the answer? Take it to God in prayer. Take it to God in prayer. Church, there is nothing wrong with seeking godly counsel. When you're going through whatever you're having to go through. But godly counsel can only do so much. Take it to your Father in prayer. In prayer and, suppl <coughs> and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be known unto God. And like I said, you're telling me to be thankful for this trial? No, I'm telling you to be thankful for everything he's bought you out of now. I'm, th I I'm telling you to thank him for everything he's done. Because it is... It 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 bursts, it instills, it lights the flame of faith in you when you recount what he's already brought you through. He's already brought you through the Red Sea once. He's already torn down walls of Jericho once. He's already brought you through the fire once. So you can trust him to deliver you out of the anxiety and the, the, the depression and whatever you're dealing with. You can trust him, church. You can trust him, JB. The reality. We can trust him.
you may be going through whatever it is you're dealing with. And you feel like he's left you. And your thoughts are going a million miles an hour. Lord, where are you at? Why am I having to go through this? You said in your word, you wouldn't give us more than we could bear, but you would make a way out. Lord, this is more than I can bear. But the reality of it is, we weren't meant to carry it. Whatever it is. But by everything, through prayer and supplication, letting our request be known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth our understanding shall keep your hearts. See, we're too busy worrying over stuff and we overlook the peace. Bible says the peace of God shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ. See, he paid for our peace at Calvary. Satan, look, y'all, the Bible says Satan comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal our peace. He wants to kill our peace. By Lord, he wants to kill our peace. He wants to destroy our peace. You think it's the Lord's will that he destroy our peace? No. Seek the Lord. To give you his peace. A peace that passes all understanding, a peace that says, Lord, even though the storm is raging, I trust you. Even though I'm going through the fire, Lord, there's that fourth man in the fire. Lord, even though I'm in the valley, you're going to see me through it. Lord, even though I'm in a prison, I'm going to praise you out of it. Praise is what we do. Worship is who we are. Are we worshiping and praising through the storm? Or are we allowing Satan to kill, steal, and destroy our trust and our faith? And are we allowing him to steal, kill, and destroy our peace that Jesus Christ paid for us to have? Because Satan, his main goal is to destroy. And if he can steal our peace, he's well on his way to stealing our faith. I'm not saying all will be peace. That's not at all what I'm saying. We will go through trial. We will go through temptation. We will have to go through and pass through the valley. And through the fire and through the flood. But the thing is, we go through. We don't stay. We trust him through whatever we are going through. In church, it's not easy because we cannot see anything but the storm that is raging all around us. But all of a sudden, we catch a glimpse of the man walking on the water. 
we catch a glimpse of him walking on the water to us and we look around him and we see the water is still. Our lifeguard walks on water. You're drowning, he's going to pick you up. Once again, I point you back to Peter. Peter walked on the water, but yet he got his eyes off of Christ and onto the storm and began to sink. The Bible says Jesus reached down and picked him up, and they walked together back to the boat. He may be asleep in your boat, and, and it may be filling with water. And you may be trying to wake him up. And you're shaking him, Lord, perish thou, carest thou not that we perish. Child of God, your cries have awoken the master. Your cries have awoken the master, and you can rest assured that even if he doesn't steal the storm, he steals the storm on the inside of his child. You're not alone, child of God. He has not. Now listen to me, he has not and will not leave you. And I know Satan comes in and he's like, he's left you. I've got you, you're mine. He has not left. He may be asleep. But he has not left. He will see you through this trial. If you will just trust him to do so. He's never lost one, church. Yes, people have turned their backs. But as long as we keep the faith. He will not lose one. He will see us through. Come hell. Come devils. Come demons. Come high water. Because once again, he walks on water. You may be drowning or feel like you're drowning. He walks on water, and he will walk to save you. You can trust him, church, because the cross paid for it. The cross paid to give you the peace of God, which passes Passes all understanding. There's an old song, and I may try to find it and post it. You wonder, you wonder why I'm smiling through the thunder. You wonder why I'm smiling through the storm. Because I know who I serve. I serve the one that can speak to that storm and say, peace be still. I serve the one that can arise out of a slumber and say, peace be still. I serve the one that can speak to the mountain and say, mountain be thou removed. But even if he does it, my Lord, even if he doesn't move the mountain, even if he doesn't steal the storm, he'll teach me to climb the mountain. 
He'll calm the storm in me. The storm is raging all around me, but yet I'm calm. Because he calms his child. Child of God, trust him. And I know that that's easier said than done, especially when you're dealing with a storm. But you can rest assured he has not left. It may seem like it. He hasn't left. And as long as you keep the faith, you will come through this. You will come out the other side. Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I have delivered what I feel like you needed me to deliver to your people. I ask that it penetrate hearts. I ask that your Holy Spirit comfort, that your Holy Spirit wraps his arms around your child. Father, that even though they're in a storm, even though their life is in turmoil, that they feel the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That they know and can rest that you are in control. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I will see y'all Sunday morning.